course, congratulate my fellow recipients of these awards. I want to thank um, the friends and colleagues who nominated me for this, the women of council who selected me, and of course, council itself for uh, honoring me with this award. I've lived in the city of Toronto for my whole adult life since I emigrated to this country in the early 1970s. I emigrated during the time of the Vietnam War, and I'll be forever grateful the way the people of Toronto opened their arms to us who came up. And uh, I've never had the chance to express it this way. The city has changed dramatically from that time, and as people said before me, it's one of the most diverse cities in the world with people coming from all over the globe with hopes of a better life, and it's these people along with the First Nations people who have made us the city we are. And I've been, <laughs> I've been incredibly privileged to be part of some of the changes that affected so many women's lives. I've been privileged because I've had the opportunity to work alongside with, learn from, be inspired by such extraordinary women women who've committed themselves to making life better for all women in Toronto, no matter their class, race, sexuality, ability. And we've had some extraordinary successes, I think. This will mention the struggle for reproductive justice, one of the most significant victories, I think, for the women's movement in this country. And it all started with a few women getting together with a courageous doctor over there on Harvard Street, and it grew to hundreds, to thousands, to tens of thousands. And I think it showed us all that we have a capacity when we organize together to make significant change. And there have been other successes as well. I'm not going to mention them all, but the $10 minimum wage, that fight that labor and community stood side by side with the most economically disadvantaged in our city to try and move the equation further a little bit. And again, people thought we couldn't do it, but we did with public meetings in Malvern, Parkdale, Davenport, Jane Finch, and the people of the city coming out. And we know that women are the vast majority of the poor. There's a rising gap, a widening gap between rich and poor, and women are at the bottom still. So many changes have taken place. Paid parental leave, giving women the right to have the children they choose to have legislation on racist and sexist harassment, the huge uh, gains that the LGBTQ community has made. All of these are tremendous accomplishments. But I think when we look around this city today, we know that so many women are still struggling. So many women are fearful of what the future will bring. And no woman today should have to go to sleep wrapped with anxiety because she doesn't know if the job she has today will be there tomorrow. How is she going to feed her kids, pay the rent, the mortgage? A woman should not have to think, should I have another child because I'm not sure I can access affordable child care? A woman should not reach her retirement with fear and foreboding because her pension is so small and senior services may not long be there for her. So we know we have to redouble our efforts. We have to continue the fight. We have to take up the challenges to make this city a city where every woman can live with dignity and respect. And that is our challenge. And I want to thank my sisters in solidarity, my sisters in struggle, who I've worked with all these years, my comrades, the women's movement, the trade union movement, and the United Steelworkers, which is my union, and all of them have helped me to live a life, a life of struggle and campaigning that has been so rich. And I'll say that what brings hope and inspiration to me is when I leave the International Women's Day Rally every year, which has been going on since 1978, walk out into the streets, and see thousands of women marching, hearkening back to the immigrant women in the first part of the 20th century who fought for their rights, their dignity at work, their children. And when I see who comes out, the uh, Chinese seniors from a downtown Toronto community center, young women from Scarborough, or from uh, Lawrence Heights, or North Etobicoke, and you see them marching, you see them singing Bread and Roses, and you look into their faces and you see the hope and you see the determination and you see the courage to go out there and change the world and make it better for all of their sisters. And our, our, I think our future in their hands, we have nothing to worry about. 
So I want to thank you all for this uh, incredible honor and accept this award with humility, I hope. And uh, I accept it on behalf of every woman in every movement who struggles every day, not only for a better life for themselves, but a better life for all their sisters. And I will tell you, we will leave no woman behind. Thank you so much.